Tron. If you did not get a chance to see this yesterday, the cards you probably are going to have to look up are Surge Node and Core Tapper. Yeah, so these are some cards that just let you generate a ton of mana in conjunction with Everflowing Chalice and Astral Cornucopia. Over a few turns, they kind of do the Tron thing where you go, all right, I have one mana, I have two mana, and I have 30 mana. Look at that. It's perfect. Kind of talk about each of those cards as they come up. The main component, what you're saying, Everflowing Chalice and Astral Cornucopia are artifacts that tap for mana equal to the number of charge counters on them. Correct. And then you have things like Core Tapper, Surge Node to put more charge counters on them. Right. Normally, the way those cards are read, you put counters on them by paying a lot of mana up front. But exactly. you'll see Lee play them at X equals zero. So they tap for nothing, and then he'll sneak charge counters onto them in other ways to get a lot of extra mana faster than you'd expect. And there happen to be a lot of other cards in this deck that tend to play nicely with those charge counters as well. Blast Zone, Chalice of the Void. We saw him earlier yesterday do some real fancy stuff with some Chalice of the Voids to slip his own spells through them. All right, so opponent Ben Nikolic starts out on Faithless Looting, which dumps a Hogak into the graveyard. Here's Stitcher's Supplier. Seeing if he can get a Vengevine as well. He looks like he does not. It dumps a Bloodgast, though. So with a land here, he should be good to make a turn two Hogak. Counting the cards in the graveyard, making sure all his yep. T's are crossed, yep. I's are dotted. He'll only have turn two Hogak. It won't be Hogak and Vengevine. <sighs> sometimes, you know, it. I hate to be this way, but sometimes you have to settle for 12 power on turn two instead of 16. What a great deck. See, you know, here you get to get a Dryad Arbor. That's an attacker. Okay. Why is Dryad, Dryad Arbor better than another land? Well, Dryad Arbor is something that can convoke out Hogak. It looks like he is just going to go for the regular land, though. Because he has two creatures already. Right. Okay. He just kind of has that wrapped up and wants to develop his hand more. Grave Crawler. All three will work together to convoke Hogak. He's actually putting an extra mana with the convoke to really preserve cards in his graveyard. You see Faithless Looting and then a land are both left there. Right. He is going to end up missing a point this way, but... If he thinks that he's going to have to cast this Hogak multiple times, it's fine. All right, here we go. So, second Tron land, and you see that with Expedition Map. You think, oh, that's going to be the whole turn. <laughs> you would be wrong. Astro Cornucopia on zero. Mox Opal on zero. Here's some extra mana. Here's Core Tapper. He sacrifices it to put two charge counters on the Cornucopia and casts Ensnaring Bridge while making turn three Tron. Did you see this him is sacrifice so nice. that Core Tapper and it did not go to the graveyard? He immediately just handed it to Nikolic. <laughs> <laughs> he picked it up, pointed at the cornucopia, and said, yeah, you can read it. Assassin's Trophy means he's still going to take a ton of damage. But normally, I just want to point out that instead of seeing turn three Tron, it's turn three Tron while putting an ensnaring bridge in play in the meantime. I have good news. We're still going to have seven mana next turn. Oh, yeah. We also might not have many life points. We will see. Well, you know, as long as you have more than zero, you, life okay. finds a way. Yeah, most mana wins, right? So he'll need... I believe he has a sideboard copy of Ensnaring Bridge. So Karn the Great Creator. Because he can use Cornucopia to pop the map. Ooh, that's true. Play the land. That'd be Tron. Eight mana worth of lands. Mox Opal is nine. If he has a Karn, you know, he, he can make all this work. Okay, step one. Crack the map. Okay. Gets the third Tron piece. And with the speed he's moving, I think he's got something. This is not the way someone who's about to lose looks. Wow. That Karn is so good at creating things. He's the greatest of creators. I, he'd love to create a Mycosynth Lattice, but I think right now it's going to be Ensnaring Bridge. And it is. <sighs> Sometimes you just got to make do. Second copy. Passes. And with one more turn... Karn's going to find Michael and Lattice and end this game. So he does have two cards in his hand, which means this Karn is likely getting attacked down by the small creatures oh, on right. Nikolic's side of the battlefield. So five points of power. Do you attack down the Karn, or do you go Easy. at Lee? Attack. Okay. Attack Karn. the Karn. Faithless looting from Ben Nikolic. It might be a little bit greedier, but you could just get completely locked out if Lee were to get something like a walking ballista or something to that effect here question I have for Ben Nikolic's deck. We saw the Assassin's Trophy. That is his only main deck way to answer an ensnaring bridge. So given that that's the case, maybe you do send upstairs, right? He may upstairs, just be priced right? into attacking here. The, again, you just... You probably send two at Karn to put it to one. 
That seems free. It doesn't cost you a turn off the clock. Right. And it stops the lattice. I like that. Or you just kill the car and put lead a five here, and you're still not taking a turn off the clock, but that mean, this means the car won't get to build a blocker out of ensnaring bridge. But it's hard. There's no way to answer bridge, and Lee has so much mana that he's going to empty his hand. And that's what we see. Mystic Forge from Lee. My assumption, if I were on Nikolic's side of the table, would be that McLeod had so many lands in hand because he was had the two cards he couldn't play off four mana the previous turn. Right. So that would lead me to believe it's lands, and I would just kind of hope he had more lands. And I think Lee has done it. I think he's, he's successfully hid behind the ensnaring bridge. So at this point... Nikolic is really just kind of hoping for a copy of Carrion Feeder to be able to bust through this ensnaring bridge. So 1-1, one, one, somehow a card gets stuck in Lee's hand. You attack with it, sacrifice everything. Exactly. Oh, well, this kind of throws it off. That's a blocker. Yeah. <laughs> or a tapper. <laughs> now, the question I have is, how does a card get stuck in Lee's hand? Is it even possible? If he draws more consecutive lands. Never mind. Last card's <laughs> ever flowing chalice. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Is there a way that he'll draw two at, cards in a turn, maybe? At this point, it's really hard to say that would be the case. Nothing he has here is really going to draw a card. Mystic Forge lets him play cards off the top. Theoretically, he could Karn and minus it and end up with an extra card in his hand. But outside of that kind of situation, it's hard to imagine that being the case. He doesn't have anything like Chromatic Star or anything to that effect to add too many cards to his hand. He could crack a bunch of Mishra's Bobbles, but Lee is not better. the kind of player yeah. to do that. So I do want to talk about just the academic part of this. Lee has set up a lock, which we don't believe Ben Nicklich can break. Correct. So at some point, and I mean, this is how the deck works. It's a lock deck. Now, at some point, Lee has to win the game. Uh, if Ben's not going to make him play that out. Most likely. But in theory, how does Lee end a game here once he has a full lock that cannot be broken? He finds another copy of Karn the Great Creator to get Micah and Thalatis and just make it to where Nikolic cannot cast any spells all right. at all. And then from there, walking Ballista seals the deal. So he has one Ballista in his sideboard and one in his main. Karn finds a Ballista, slowly puts counters on it. Then eventually there's 14 or 20 and wins. Slowly. He I guess he has a lot of mana. Yeah, it's not he could have made it, what, a 10-10 ten, ten there or something like that? Okay, quickly gets a blizzard yeah. and ends <laughs> the game. And first game result in, it is Lee McLeod on Charge Tron, up 1-0 on Hogak. That's impressive with Golgari Depths and Rakdos Reanimator on the back table. Having yeah, the he, prison deck win first, that's a lot. Well, it's interesting. This uh, Charge Tron deck... It feels, you know, so it has these ensnaring bridge Mox Opa elements that makes it feel like Urza or something like a like a prison deck but at the same time it, well hold on I'm gonna get to that in a second I want to point out it's not just the first game it's a full sweep for Lee's team in, in these first game ones backs against the wall for the team of Rossum, Nikolic and Long they basically I guess they could give up one more game between them but after that they need to win a total of four games five games maybe so going back to Lee's deck, I think talking about it as a prison deck feels a bit wrong. It feels, when, when you talk about it, it feels like a mono-red Stompy deck in Legacy, where it's like, turn one or two, you make some really annoying three-mana card that shuts off your opponent's deck, and then about two turns later, you make something big to win the game. And, you know, it's like, you disrupt on turn one, you win on turn three or four, and then you hope it never gets to turn eight because you're probably dead if it does. Sure. So a lot of what this deck is trying to do in a lot of cases is kind of halfway between Lantern Control and, like you mentioned, those red stompy decks. Because it's not, it doesn't quite have the same propensity to just kill someone out of nowhere like the red stompy deck does. Out of those decks, we see things like Goblin Rabble Master, Chandra, Torture Defiance, and so on. Whereas we mentioned that Walking Ballista Kill before is really the only efficient way that Lee has to deal any sort of actual damage to Nikolic. So we're going to see situations where that game was not literally over that turn, even though it was effectively over. That concession was almost a courtesy from Nikolic. A win here should put Lee's team into the top eight. With that, they'll be back for the elimination rounds. They'll also gain invitations to the Star City SEG Con Winter coming up in November. If you want to get an invitation to this and find it that top eighting and open, 
is not something that has ha is, a, is a far away goal. There's other ways to qualify, and we have the Star City Games Invitational Qualifiers. These are regional tournaments. They're held at local stores. They are cash tournaments, $1,000 in prizes guaranteed to the top eight. And on top of that, the two players in the finals of each of these tournaments do qualify for SCG Con Winter. Yeah, and it's a good way to get ready for it, too, right? A lot of times it's kind of hard to find really serious competition if you can't travel to these as consistently as some of the players we see on the tour. This is a great way to kind of get your feet wet in a competitive setting. Yeah, also additionally, it rewards SCG points, which can help you earn buys at opens if you can ma if you make it out to our opens. Also, if you play some of these, getting up to 10 points is another way outside of winning one of these to, to join us at SCG Con Winter. Yeah, absolutely. Those definitely add up over time. Find a location, starcitygames.com slash IQ. Now, looking at the sideboards, we saw this last time when we covered him yesterday. I actually think this matchup gets worse for Lee once we sideboard. Yeah, and a lot of the reason for that is, other than, say, Welding Jar, there isn't much else that Lee is gaining out of the sideboard. Most of his sideboard real estate is being occupied by what we refer to as a wish board for Karn the Great Creator to get yeah. cards from outside of the game. But then if we look at Nikolic's side of things, we see Force of Vigor, Assassin's Trophy, and possibly even Thoughtseize coming in that are all meant to sort of pick apart the prison that Lee's building. Force of Vigor, X4, and Nikolic's sideboard. This card from Modern Horizons, to me, has been the most impressive Modern Horizons card of the weekend. Uh, it's a... Well, okay, Hogak's really good. Um, it's something that, for me, is just like, it's coming onto its oh, own in the game. Oh, the other free green spell. Yeah, the yes, yeah these that's what that, beats it. Okay, sure. These spells that do really ridiculous things without requiring you to pay mana. I'm pretty into them. Yeah, the thing about Force of Vigor that's so impressive is usually when we see things like Force of Will, it's card disadvantage. But the fact is, this card is so frequently going to be break even on card advantage and put you ahead on a mana advantage. That's so huge. In this matchup, it's double Vindicate at instant speed for zero mana. That's a really good magic card. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nikolic, on the play, two blood guests into the yard. Okay. This is a start. This is yeah. a strong start. I see I see how this works. They might they do might you, be on the battlefield next turn. Do you think he's gonna pay mana for those blood gas? No. I don't think well, so. But he has to play a second land for it. So that is similar to paying mana, but I think there is a subtle difference. How subtle? Well look. Oh okay. okay. I okay. get it, because Dryad Arbor can't cast blood gas. Right, 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 that's the difference. That's the sure, difference. Sure, sure. Urza's Tower for Lee. Two drawn pieces for Lee. Makes Mox Opal. Now we see why he didn't crack that bauble. He's trying to make Metalcraft. And we will see Chalice of the Void on one to turn on Mox Opal. That's a great way to turn on a Mox Opal. <laughs> uh, looking at Ben's deck. So what do we have turned off? We have Blood Gas. This isn't play. That's not it. But Carrion Feeder... Stitcher's Supplier, Shriekhorn, Fatal Push, and Faithless Looting. So one of the things to note here is just that the, Nikolic didn't actually do anything with his mana that turn, so it's hard to say if this chalice is even that powerful. It's powerful enough that Nikolic has decided to use his Force of Vigor. Exiling, exiling an, an Assassin's right. Trophy. This is big. Well, it, How many reactive cards do you think he has in his hand? I know, right? Because... He, the, the card he cares the most about in this matchup is Ensnaring Bridge, and these are two answers to Ensnaring Bridge that he's getting rid of to deal with not Ensnaring Bridge. Right. He may just think that having five power in play and a way to deal with an Ensnaring Bridge or just go under an Ensnaring Bridge is okay. good enough. Is that I, two Assassin's it's another trophy, trophy in his hand? Yeah. At least one more. Might You might be right. He has three total in the 75, so it could be two more copies. Okay. Are these Assassin's Trophy strip mines? Oh, is he no. doing that? No, we saw him get They're an not. island he has last an island. game. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Now, if Lee were to play the island, I wouldn't be surprised if Nicklich starts going after his mana. And I think Nicklich is, is really thinking about going at some lands here. Doing this at sorcery speed's a bit surprising. Goes for Urza's mine. 
You'd want to do it during upkeep in case he draws the violent? Right, something like their draw step. Yeah, during draw. Right. Gives him it, one more chance to... If, if Lee naturally draws the island, it's a blowout. Right, it's unlikely to matter. I can't think of a reason to time it main phase. I think you're right that, that there's a small edge that Nikolic gave away there. Right, especially since he's drawing two cards because of right. Mishra's bobble. Well, joke's on Nikolic. Lee had one mana cards, so thanks for blowing up the chalice. Now we get to have Surge now. Wow, node. got him. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's reading it. We'll we'll take a look at Surge Node too. Can't believe you're giving your opponent some Surge wow. Nodes. Wow, what a spew! Now he's gonna put Charge Counters on any artifact. Mox Opal, boom, Charge Counter. Got him. Mistress Bobble, Had Charge it. Counter. Shriekhorn from Ben Nikolic. Surge Node is just the Oprah you could, of Charge you, Counters. You could reload his Shriekhorn with it. <laughs> Let me check, Shriekhorn, yeah, those are charge counters. Oh, they counters. are charge counters. Oh, yeah. I guess it could definitely, it wouldn't be that shocking for it to be like a fire counter or something weird <laughs> like that. A trash counter. Uh, right, because it's dumping things. Yeah, Shriekhorn is shooting fire. I'm looking at the art here. It's got skulls coming out of the fire, though. So maybe it's like some demonic fire, something like that. Well, maybe it's a crematorium horn. Ooh. <laughs> I, th I think it's, it's That sounds it like the name of like a really brutal metal right. band. <laughs> crematorium, crematorium horn. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to Warp <laughs> Tour near you. Uh-oh. I think that was a core tapper off top. All these counters and nowhere to put them. Oh my goodness! Counters, counters everywhere, and not a, not a, not a chalice to tap. As soon as an astral cornucopia shows up, it is over for Nikolic. <laughs> Lee will have all the mana, just instantly. Four charge counters on the cornucopia. Call that a ritual. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, I guess, in line with the name, Shriekorn is shooting screams out of it. That's what's going on with the. Oh, right. yeah, that does, those are what those words mean. Yeah. Huh. I sometimes do that with magic cards, where I learn the name of the card without actually thinking about the oh, words. Oh, is that a Vingevine and a Hogak off the oh, Sayer Wayfinder? Okay. Oh, hey, the Hogak deck's doing its thing, and that could be a lot of damage. Core Tapper is not an adequate <laughs> blocker. <laughs> it is a 1-1, one -one, uh, and now we're going to see some work from Nikolic. So... Seder Wayfinder, you mentioned, milled over Hogak and Vengevine. Land gets back Blood Gas. Now some convoking from these creatures. That's going to convoke Hogak. Oh, does he have to exile the Vengevine? That would be so sad. What? One, two, three. He could probably just tap, tap. an extra Blood Gas. Okay. Or he has one in his hand. And oh, he and he exiles the... Right. That's what happens. Okay. Yeah. And that's what he'll do. Hogak gets back Vengevine. And if Lee, uh, if he has a ensnaring bridge to find, he's got about one turn to do it. Takes eight, goes to four. He has to play some cards out of his hand here, too. I believe another surge node was the draw. Well, Look, allow me to just say. I like surge node in Cortex. That ain't However, it, Chief. And picks him up. So Ben Nicklich evens things out, one game apiece. Not gonna give this top wow. eight up without a fight. You know, Core Tapper could have end step put a seventh counter on Surge Node, and it just didn't happen. Wow. These are the kinds of edges that make you lose games and win in yeah. it. The pressure just it gets just, to you sometimes. Yeah, you forget to put the seventh counter on Surge Node. <laughs> you never know when Surge Node's gonna run out of counters. You never know. <laughs> Nicklich's teammate, David Long. Rallying as well, he takes the first sideboard game over Colin Smullen. <laughs> Do you think a Surge Note has ever run out of counters in a game of Modern? Uh, I have watched one Samuel Black use all run six out of them of counters on a Surge Note. So here now that. 
Lee's back on the play, his Chalice of the Voids are actually going to be so much better than they were previously. He's actually, if he has one of his Mox Opal draws with a bunch of zero-drop artifacts, he might even play a Chalice of the Void before Nikolic is able to cast his first Faithless Looting. So wait, turn one, right, you need a zero, a Mox Opal, a Chalice, so Chalice of the Void, Mox Opal, some other zero, two mana... Make a core tapper. How do you get the chalice on one? Uh, I guess you, oh, you, you, can, you just tap two mana. You, you can play just it. play. Yeah, you can just play like a zero mana, like astral cornucopia or right. ever flowing chalice. I was getting too fancy. I was thinking how to do it with core tapper, and forgot you can just pay two mana you can, for chalice. You could do it with a surge node as well. If you go land, right. opal, tap one for surge node, chalice on zero, <laughs> tap opal, surge node. So instead on of chalice. paying two for chalice of, on one. I make Chalice on zero and pay two to Surge Note it to one. There you go. There we. That's just that's just fancy play syndrome. I love it too. <laughs> well, wait, no, actually, you can do make it that way because then the Surge Note's on the table. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, it's actually right and fancy. Oh, my yeah. favorite thing. I like it when the fancy pants plays the correct one. Uh, yeah, that's not surprising from the guy who invented amulet type. Yeah, just, I want to. I want to make good plays and have them <laughs> as convoluted as possible. Pretty sure you were just sitting at a PT testing us, going, "Yeah, but if Look, there's an amulet of vigor on the table and my primeval titan gets these cards, and you know, yeah, forty-five you look, minutes later, you, you said another, the end of the turn." Look, you another. You have to look someone who's a pro magic player in the eye and say, "No, it's correct to get Sun Home Fortress of the Legion here." You know what? I think we should it's play hard. two <laughs> Simeon Spirit Guides. Any more is overboard. Look. That was about Boom! right. Is this the turn one chalice? That's how you okay. do it! As, wow, just, just, just like how we drew we, it up. Just like we said. So zero Who mana chalice, seen this coming? zero mana mox opal, here's surge node, metal craft, Surge Node transfers the counter oh, onto no. Chalice of the Void. Is there Void. a Force of Vigor coming from Nikolic? Oh, that would be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we worked so hard. Let it, I'd be like, I would just look at my phone and say, please let me have this. <laughs> look, <laughs> I registered the deck just to make this happen. Please don't blow them up. I have 10 wins in a turn. Oh, no. It's, surge it's, node. The front, Come on. it's the front card in Nikolic's hand. Oh, yeah. I mean, you don't go, hold on. I might have effects. <laughs> I says, yeah, that's fine. You have it. And now they're all going to go away. You probably leave them with the surge node, right? You don't... I think you hit the other two. Uh, oh, he's talking I, with his you, I might leave him with the Mox Opal. Yeah. How far I away guess, is this Mox Opal yeah. from doing anything? Put a counter on the Mox Opal in response. Thank you! Boom! Whoa. That's a nice Mox okay. Opal. Okay. There we go. Tightening up. Yeah. This is better than other Mox Opals because it has a charge counter. <laughs> I'm not like other Mox Opals. <laughs> Faithless looting for Nikolic. Now it's his turn to get things rolling. Another force of vigor picked up. Oh, no. Oh, God. This sideboard card is really hard to beat. Update Jeremy Bertarioni picks up the win on standard. If Lee can salvage this game, it'll send them to the top eight. Second Tron piece, Mishra's Bauble. Okay. Think this is a way in this game. It's a way in. You it's know, it felt like a blowout last turn, but we did see one of those resources just get used on a surge wow. node. And you see Lee not really caring about the Mox Opal either. He sacrifices the Bauble, so keeping himself off Metalcraft. He may just think Tron is his way in the yeah. game at this point. This is the upside of getting to play these lands in right. a deck where you don't even need to commit a ton of resources like Sylvan Scrying into making them happen. Yeah, I think that's right. Because your opponent has Force of Vigor in the deck, and I believe another one in his hand, you know, just getting the right artifacts isn't going to work. I, I'm looking at the Planeswalkers to win the game. Karn the Great Creator has to be his way to, to win. Think of it this way. If this Mishra's Bobble draws a land, that's basically the same thing having an active Mox Opal is going to do. It just yeah. pl doesn't play into Force of Vigor or anything like that in the same way. So you might as well just go for the play with a bit more upside, especially if you don't have another land drop in your hand. He also, it looks like he only has two cards in his hand. So yeah. putting all the resources into making a Mox Opal active may actually just be too tall of an order at this point. Seder Wayfinder from Nick Litch. If he flips over a Hogak. Oh, that's a Vengevine. All right. Did he get a land off it? Uh, he did not. 
Now, just milled for four. Beets. Is there a Hogak? No, not even a Hogak. Dang, most people have to pay mana for an Entomb. And this one you got a 1-1 one -one as well. We just don't get a free 8-8. Eight -eight. There's just no Why justice. Why do people even play this deck? <laughs> I, you, right, you watch this deck for long <gasps> enough. <gasps> the and second you... card down was the third Tron piece. Okay, seven mana. Now what's the payoff? Three for Ensnaring Bridge. I, that's a start. Yeah, that's, that's one gonna... of the cards here. This is why you play the deck. This will get, if there's another Force of Vigor, it'll get the Force of Vigor out of Nikolic's hand. Nikolic will probably wait until he has something bigger. <laughs> and Lee, just the other two cards is Mox Opals, just dumps them out of the hand. All right. Wisely keeping the one with the charge counter on the battlefield. <laughs> Got to play to your outs. As we covered, it is better than the other Mox Opals. Well, it's not like them. It is different. I always like when I play Magic on Magic Online, and one of my cards is Foil, and the other two aren't. You know when they Thought sees you, they 10 out of 10 times take your Foil. Because they know. I gotta they be know honest, it's better. I'm the respectful type to not. I, but no, I tell you them. Don't even ex that doesn't I even tell exist. Them. I literally will type... Or tell the person, in, tell them in person. Please no. <laughs> you paid extra for that. I'll even let you keep it, and then point at the other one with the thought sees. Everflowing chalice on three from Lee, and that there we go. Force of vigor pitching a third force of vigor. Uh, I wonder whether that was a bit hasty on Nikolic's side. You can keep a force of vigor, pitch something else, or does he just have the he fourth one? He probably just wants to start attacking. No, he just has the fourth one in his hand. <laughs> no, that's actually it. Why wouldn't he? <laughs> I was going to say, wait till you have a different green card or the fourth mana, because Lee is not doing anything. But oh, my mistake, he just has the fourth one. Bright side, this carrion oh. feeder off the top. We're going to really get things going here. So carrion feeder grave crawler is a nice combo. The carrion feeder gets big. Stop me if you've heard this one before. I shall cast this grave crawler from my graveyard as I have this other zombie. That's, you hear that one a lot. Oh, yeah. So a swing here for seven. Vengevine coming back. Another last card in Ben Nicholas's hand is a Grave Crawler. So it's wrong. It's not the last four, Force of Vigor. So Lee's not out of this game. If he rips a card in the Great Creator or a Bridge, like yeah. both of those get him back in. Says go. Now, I think oh, he has no. to do it. Does he have to do it this turn? I think this is death. Two, four. I, I think he's dead. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But you can use the three black mana to make it To 13. make it one more point of damage. You effectively give a Grave Crawler Summoning Sickness, but you sacrifice two damage for three damage. Yeah, and I if we have it counted outright, I think that's Lee's life total. Yeah, four, five, six, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yep. So it's exact. Wanting to do all the math. I guess you could do fourteen if you sack it a fourth time, but splitting right. hairs and all that. One. To, oh, oh, right. Oh, we get to easy. sack the Vengevine, yeah. too, right? Yeah. We, I like Vengevine in the mix is more damage. Oh, this is this is fair. Let's just not pay for spells, you know. Three. This is going to be good enough. Yep, second creature of the turn brought back Vengevine. Sacrifice the Summoning Sick Gravecrawler. Cast it. Do it one more time. So you're going to have six from the feeder. The Vengevine makes ten. The Gravecrawler and Wayfinder make thirteen. And an extra two from Bloodgast just in case. Should be five counters on the Carrion Feeder and zero life for Lee. And that's the handshake. So Ben Nikolic keeps his team alive, which sends it over to the Legacy Table to decide which team will be moving on to the top eight. David Long and Collins Mullen doing battle. You know, this Rectus Reanimator deck has been getting a lot of love this weekend. We saw it get taken down earlier. I don't know if we've seen it win yet. But it's on the play yeah. now. And this is the kind of matchup where I honestly I like it. I think it's great right? in this matchup, especially since Long kind of has a slightly slower version of the depth deck, where yeah. it's a little bit more grindy with Elvish Reclaimers. Yeah, you're playing Black Red, Reactor's Reanimator, that's a, a deck that's trying to do things on turn one, and your opponent does not register Force of Will. Right, and if Collins is able to just get something like a Tide Spout Tyrant, that card's almost unbeatable. Absolutely. I like Collins here. We'll see whether or not it plays out that way. 
So game three puts Collins on the play. He took game one. Chancellor of the Annex was a pregame reveal right before we came down here. So there is a Chancellor trigger waiting for David's first spell. <laughs> if we get there. Or do we just thought seize ourselves? Unmask, but yeah. Okay, unmask yourself. Discarding Gristlebrand. Dark Ritual into Animate Dead. Okay, so this is what happens when you don't register Force of Will, is your opponents do things like this. Yep, Surgical Extraction couldn't even have saved long here because, because of that Chancellor. That's <laughs> neat. So you need two Surgicals to beat this? Yeah, no, no big... D that's, you know, that's Surgical Black card. That's like a Force of Will. Same thing. When does Dave have Force of Vigor? Well, also, to be fair, Surgical plus Force of Vigor would have beaten this. Right. If you Force of Vigor the Animate Dead with the trigger on the stack. Yeah. Dave does not have Force of Vigor. He has three Surgicals. So he would have needed two in his opening hand to fight back here. I'm and just still high doesn't. on Force of Vigor, even if it's not in his deck. Maybe it oh, should have Oh, I am all about that card. Zero mana it, is so much less than one. It won Ben both the sideboard games. Yeah, and it wasn't close. So now Gristlebrand draws seven. We'll see whether Long gets a turn. This when no one when both legacy players play non blue decks in legacy, this sort of stuff starts to happen. It's hard to imagine that Collins doesn't just go to five here. Go the, What's the risk? deck doesn't deal fair chunks of damage very frequently. It's usually going to be dealing 20 damage or no damage. And especially when there's a 6-7 flying lifelink creature, you don't have to worry about the vampire hex mage beatdown plan. So down to 5 goes Collins. Draws a fistful of cards. Likely looking for a lotus petal in order to keep going here. We can see dark rituals peeking out of his hand. So dark ritual brings him up to 3 black mana. Oh, he did have an extra black right. floating, didn't he? He st yeah, he still did. <laughs> so the idea is to somehow get a Chancellor in play. Is that right? Right. That way you just end up force spiking every single spell your opponent plays. Yeah. On top of the one that's kind of still waiting. Up to five black we go. I suppose he could Thought Seize, Animate Dead. Yeah, that's, that's what he's looking toward. Looks like there's an Entomb hiding out in hand as well. Some powerful magic here <laughs> being played by Collins. That might be enough to send them to the finals. Ashen Rider. Well, you can't, don't want to get that. There's nothing to Ashen Rider let. You haven't given your opponent a turn. Probably just going to look at the Chancellor to just seal things off. But if something like Grave Titan is also going to effectively yeah. lock it up. Interesting one. Vegas of the Moon. How about that? That's not particularly beatable. Magic of the Moon. I was looking other things in the sideboard. He has Archetype of Endurance as well. Elish Norn and Iona. But yeah, Magus of the Moon, I think, plays here. Yeah, that one's pretty good against the land-based combo stratagem. Dave Long does... He plays two basics. Does he have a Dismember? Let's check for that one. No. no. I was going to say if he had a dismember, he could theoretically play a Dark Depths with no counters on it and then dismember the Magus of the Moon. I like the thought sees here on David. Mox Diamond, thought sees. Little Elvish Reclaimer. Allow me to say, that's not going to do it. <laughs> yep. Mox Diamond gone. Exhum down to one mana. Brings back Magus of the Moon. And that is a pretty powerful turn one. And, you know, we don't have the table mic'd or anything, but if I were in Colin's chair, I imagine something to the effect of, you may play your first land now, would be said. <laughs> Yeah, he has, to, he has to discard three more cards before he says that. Or, excuse me, and... All right, first all right. land coming. David will play a mountain. And this should wrap it up pretty quick. Lotus Petal. 
Uh, we have another animate dead in Collins' hand. He can get that Chancellor he's discarded. Don't believe Dave is going to resolve a spell. And he'll go for Exhum on the Chancellor. Dave's cards cost one more. He picks up a card. And will he pick up the other two cards? And that's going to do it. Collins with the win. He, Collins Mullen, Lee McLeod, and Jeremy Bear Terrioni win and advance to the top eight.